In Jesus' name, welcome the Trinity Lutheran Church, because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a beautiful day to come together. We are in the month of May as we are gathering here on the 5th of May. By the way, did you get a May basket? I did not. Oh, okay. Neither did I. That's all right. But we are here gathered together on this 5th of May on this Sunday. Just a couple of announcements for you. Coming up next week on May 12th, of course, is the famous Mother's Day that we will celebrate all of our mothers on that day. But it also is a day that our young people, our Sunday school kids, will be singing here in church. And so we invite you to participate and hear them bring a song in worship next week. Additionally, on Sunday, May 19th, many things will be happening. One is we'll be celebrating Pentecost. Two, we will make sure to recognize our seniors that are graduating from high school and bless them as they continue on their journey and wrap them with quilts of God's love as we recognize that simultaneously it is also blessing of the quilt Sunday. And so we will not only be recognizing our seniors, but quilting them or putting quilts around them and also recognizing the many, many quilts that were made, not only for our seniors, but for many organizations, both locally, locally and globally, uh, that can use those quilts for people in need. Exactly. So we are quickly moving into the month of May as the weather is warming and the spring flowers are blooming. But with that being said, my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. For I'm part of the family the family of God. You will notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family and these folks are so near. When it's one has a heartache we all shed a tear and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by His blood. Joy dares with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. From the door of an orphanage to the house of the king, no longer outcast a new song I sing from rags unto riches from the weak to the strong I'm not worthy to be here but praise God I belong I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. Yes, I'm part of the family, the family of God. Yes, I'm part of the family, the family of God. 
Please join me for confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Our reading this morning for the children's message comes from the book of Acts, and it's titled, The Holy Spirit Comes Down. So let's listen to what does that mean? Whenever Peter spoke about God, a crowd gathered to listen. All eyes were on Peter. Some of the eyes looked confused. Other eyes looked surprised. The eyes of the crowd grew wider and wider. They were amazed by what they were hearing. God has plenty of love for everyone, Peter said. God loves us all the same. Whoosh! The Holy Spirit came flying down from heaven. It was a gift from God sent into the hearts of all the people in the crowd. Did the Holy Spirit come into the hearts of the people who followed God's rules? Yes! God loved them. Did the Holy Spirit come into the hearts of the people who did not follow God's rules? Yes! God loved them too. No one is left out of God's love. Well, that's a beautiful story, Pastor Eric, that talks about God loving us so much and that uh, he sent down the Holy Spirit to be upon us and to share that love with us. What's really interesting is that the gospel reading that we're talking about today, where Jesus says that God loves us, but then we are to love everyone else. And, and I funny. think that's the Holy Spirit working in and through us mm -hmm. to pointing us towards what Jesus teaches and equipping us and guiding us and directing us to share that love with others. Exactly. There was a saying that uh, a pastor told me once a long time ago as uh, we were departing and, and they said, God loves you and so do I. And I really thought that was kind of a cool saying because what it was doing is acknowledging what we just read, that the Holy Spirit comes down, God's love is with us, that God loves us, but then Jesus commanded us to love one another. And so by saying, God loves you, and so do I, is fulfilling the commandment that Jesus gave us as well. Right, and acknowledging that the Holy Spirit is upon us and in and through us and through our baptisms, we are reminded that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. Exactly, exactly. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit down upon us. Thank you for loving each and every one of us. Help us now as we go out into this week to share that love that you gave to us, to each and every one of them. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.
Our first reading is from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Our second reading is from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. These are the three. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the boldness we have put, we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have obtained the requests made of him. If you see your brother or sister committing what is not a mortal sin, You will ask, and God will give life to such a one, to those whose sin is not mortal. There is sin that is mortal. I do not say that you should pray about that. Here ends our second reading. The gospel reading for this Sunday is coming from the gospel writer John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servant any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that my Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Well, this morning, we've had the opportunity to listen to the gospel writer John give his account of those final days that Jesus was spending with his disciples. He was giving them instructions last week when Pastor Eric identified the the vine, the true vine, and the fruit of that vine, and how we are the fruits of that vine. This Sunday, though, the gospel writer, John, identifies this commandment, this commandment that he's giving to the disciples, and not only to the disciples, but to each and every one of us. This commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for a friend's. When I hear that, I often wondered, what does that mean? So many times in our society today, when we hear the word love, we kind of go through a checklist of love, and we try to identify what the love is that Jesus is talking about. Is it the romantic love? Is it the love of passion? Or... Is it the love of deep friendships, of a high school friend that you've stayed in contact over the years and you can talk to and share with? Is it that type of a love? Or is it a playful love where you are just enjoying life and the the love that you have and the ability to go out and just playfully be a part Or is it maybe a long-standing love? (laughs) I love the hills of Maplewood. They've been standing there a long time. Is it that type of a love? Or maybe is it a love of self? You might be thinking when I say that, that that's kind of selfish if you love yourself. But you know what? We're asked to love ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to lift ourselves up. Or maybe it's a family love, a love of mom and dad, our brothers, our sisters, our kids. Is it a family love that Jesus is identifying here? Or maybe it's an obsessive love, the love of money, the love of having something, the love of getting and gathering everything for oneself. No, the love that Jesus, I think, is identifying here is what we call agape love. Love for everyone. If you were to look it up, agape love says this, often considered the highest form of love. It embodies the selflessness, the sacrifice, and the unconditional care for others. So my friends, this morning, as I thought about this type of love, this agape love, I had an opportunity to sit down with a friend this week and allow this individual to share his thoughts, his feelings of what agape love means to him. Take a listen. Well, my friends, we're here this morning with, I'm here with a dear friend of mine, uh, Mike Nettiston. Good to have you with me, Mike. And uh, Mike, we're going to have conversation because this week, on May 7th, you are celebrating your 10th anniversary of your heart transplant. That's right. That's amazing. It is. It is. It's amazing. Number one, I can't believe it's been 10 years you know, and, and uh, I think um, it's something worth celebrating for yourself, for the community as well to recognize that because there were a lot of people that yeah. know it and uh, were praying for you yeah, they were. and such. So yeah. this morning, Mike, what I want to do is just talk about um, that journey that, that you were on. And so, um, Mike, what happened Ten years ago, what, what, was, what took place? Well, ten years ago, um, at the time, I had 
I was on a heart pump, mm-hmm. a LVAD they call it, that okay. assists the heart, your heart. It, yeah. it pumps it for you. And um, it was a bridge to be on, the, on a transplant list okay. to receive a, a transplant. Um, and uh, I was on ten. I was on the heart pump for ten months okay. prior to my heart transplant. Okay. So um, that put me on the list, and um, I got the call. Okay. Two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning. Right. And uh, from my uh, transplant team, mm-hmm. said Mike, we have a donor. My gosh. And everything has been planned out before that, what is expected of me and what to do. So I got the call. Uh, they said uh, there's going to be a jet to meet you in Fergus Falls Airport. Okay. Get there uh, as soon as you can. Sure. So we left right away, got to the airport, and uh, within 10 minutes of that, the plane was there to meet me, and we boarded. I boarded. <laughs> yep. So you, so you boarded alone? With Now, there's two nurses. Okay. A pilot and co-pilot and two nurses. Uh, they flew me down to the cities. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it took about an hour and a half flight. Um, and as soon as they admit you, you're, they're starting the prep because... You have to be ready when the heart arrives. Right. And uh, the donor's heart is harvested last. Right. Okay. That's the last organ to be removed from the donor. Okay. So, um, wow. At that point, uh, uh, things happen quickly. Things happen quickly. Uh, I was in a self induced coma for a week. Okay. Uh, I kept afibbing. Yep. And uh, and then I woke up and life has been good ever since. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Mike, leading up to the transplant, what what was happening with your heart? What, what, What was going on being you found yourself in this position? Well, before my heart transplant, Almost exactly 10 years before my transplant, my transplant was on May 7th. May 17th, 20 years ago, is when I had my heart attack. Okay. Serious heart attack. Uh, And then I had congestive heart failure following that, which my heart deficiency kept dropping Dropping. over that 10 years to the point it got to uh, 10%. And then it was time for a uh, heart pump. The heart pump was a bridge to get to the transplant. transplant. Yeah. Wow. And then it was a process, even at that point, you were saying that there are certain lists that you are on. Yeah. And, uh, there's there's three, three lists. One, you have to be hospital confined on IV. That's the top list. The middle list is you have to be on IV not necessarily hospitalized. Right. The third list is you're not going to get one until you move up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, LVAD patients uh, get a uh, 30 day opportunity to go on the top list, and that is chosen by their doctor. Sure. Depending on who else is on the list and the best time of year when. More, more fertility. Fertilities occur, you know, usually holidays. Yeah. Because there's more people traveling. So I was put on the uh, one, the top list on Good Friday. Wow. And uh, I think I had about five days left on that list when I got the call. Wow. And uh, otherwise I would have gone back to the second list, which would have been another year and a half or... So however long. long. Wow. Yeah. What a journey. What a uh, journey. Mike, in that entire journey, was there ever a time 
when you thought you were going to die? You know, I had a conversation with my next door neighbor at, at, when I lived out on the lake, and he asked me the same question. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him kind of dumbfounded. I, no, I never, it never dawned on me. <laughs> that I, I, yeah, right. I, I, it didn't. It didn't. No. Wow. No. Wow. Um, this Sunday, we, the gospel writer John, speaks of the greatest commandment. And um, when you hear this text, it's, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for another. What do you think about when you hear that? I, I, very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it's very happy day for me when I received the trend, received the donor's heart. Yeah, it was a very <clears throat> it was a very sad day. Yeah, for the yeah. other family. Yeah, it was a gift of grace. Yeah, from the other family, from the donor. You know. Um, I don't know if the donor was on the list or the family yeah. offered it. Sure. Um, that doesn't make any difference, but uh, yeah, it, was, it was a gift, a grace from somebody that didn't know me yeah. at all with not expecting anything in return. Right. Um, you know, probably very much like the, the next gift of grace I'll receive from Somebody I don't deserve it from, yep. but I'll get it anyway. That's right. That's right. The gift of eternal life right. <laughs> is what you're speaking of, Mike, right. which is a beautiful thing. I know, you know, it, what you're saying is, is that emotional roller coaster. On one side, you are celebrating for that gift of a heart, and then on the other side, you are grieving the death of someone that gave you that gift. Yeah. Almost yeah. daily. And yeah. The, yeah. 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 You know, and, and listening to your story and then hearing John's words of, of this no greater gift or no greater love than to give one's life for someone else. That's exactly what happened for you. This person didn't know you, didn't know anyone, but offered up themselves. Their family mm -hmm. offered that That's up. Right whatever yeah. so yeah. organ donation that's uh that's a uh, i noticed in your yard there's a flag there is a flag be a donor be a donor be a donor you know and it and it speaks to this text the love of humanity in any way that i can love someone whether it be just as simple as as caring for them praying for them or as powerful as an organ donation. Yeah. At, at the darkest hour of somebody's family's life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, Mike, God's blessings, God's peace be with you. You Thank celebrate you. this week on this 10th anniversary, and uh, I think the most powerful thing you said is that you were given a gift, a gift of grace to continue life, but there will be another greater gift that will come in time, and that's God's gift of grace through Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Well, I want to publicly thank Mike for being able to share his story. May 7th of this week, Mike will celebrate the 10th anniversary of new life, of a new heart that has enabled him to move forward in his life and such. But it was really in his story that we could hear to give of oneself, to lay down one's life, selflessness, sacrifice, unconditional care, the agape love 
that I really truly believe is what Jesus was talking about when he said to his disciples, love one another. Love one another. So my friends, this day, as you go out into this remainder of this week and go forth, keep in mind the words that Jesus left with his disciples are the same words that he leaves with each and every one of us. Love one another. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is, he is seated, seated at, at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit. And give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments. With our ecumenical and interreligious partners, God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak, and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation, that habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. Protect endangered species, and help us to care for all your creations. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, or mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. We pray this day for Charles Nettisted, Ashley Harthoon, Kathleen Bruns Doppler, Ardeen Erickson, Don Rongren, Earl Mickelson, Piper Larson, John Rogelstead, Jerry Ness, Richard Erickson, Christy Berg, Yvonne Wells, and all others whom we name from our hearts. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, volunteers. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone on before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hearts, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, let us give thanks for the offering we received to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, the state of Minnesota, our country, and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer with, with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we come to the close of this service, as we go out into the remainder of this day, go with this blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the winds be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your faces and the rains fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Sing a song of celebration. Lift up a shout of praise. For the bridegroom will come. The glorious one. We'll go to
to a much better place. So dance with all your might, lift up your hands and clap for joy, the time's drawing friends, as we close out this worship service, may you go out and share the love that Jesus commanded us to give, that agape love, that selflessness love that we want to give to each and every one. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless.